Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to try and uh, talk to you about Thyriatrons. I struggled with the pronunciation a while back, but it's Thyriatron. Um, what are Thyriatrons? Well, this one's an itty bitty one, and basically they are triodes with an extra particularity. So they're usually gas filled, well, always gas filled. They're a gas discharge tube. And we can see this is a passport of the Thyriotron type, type uh, TGI 400-3.5. So this is a three and a half kilovolt 400 amp uh, peak trans uh, thyroidron. It's not this one, mind you. Um, I'll show you this one a bit later. Um, so you can see it's got a filament. Uh, this one's got a directly heated cathode, if the schematic is to be believed. Um, and it's got a grid, a control grid, and an anode. And basically, what happens is in absence of a negative bias on this grid there's going to be conduction and then when you float the grid or positively bias it a bit um, the discharge occurs and there's a giant current flowing through the thing these as opposed to regular triodes will not operate in the linear region so they're either fully on or fully off and um, they're used in um, the, the, the ones that I have, apart from this itty bitty one, which I discussed in detail previously, this one comes from the pulse forming network from a DP5 Geiger counter. Uh, Thyratrons were used in either big motor controllers, because you can use them to control, chop DC and stuff like that. Or they're used in the radars to generate the uh, massive pulse of uh, radar power being transmitted. Uh, so they're quite, quite, quite interesting actually. Um, they've com they've gone completely obsolete. So the advent of the insulated gate bipolar transistor and the MOSFET has rendered them useless. But they're still fascinating devices, and they're very, very pretty. Uh, the internal construction of, of thyrotrons are very interesting, and we'll take a look at a few examples. Um, so, let's start with this one, the itty bitty one. Uh, this is a, if I'm not mistaken, a TH4B, and uh, pin 1, which is this one, is the, oops, sorry. So pin one, which is this, this one, is the anode. This is the cathode. And these are the two grids. This is like a tetrode. <clears throat> but it works the same as a tetrode, but just doesn't, it doesn't have any uh, linear region. And this, I think, is a neon thyatron. And let me just power up the... 237 behind me here and connect some uh, crocodile clips and whoops sorry wrong way around and I'll show you what these look like when they start glowing uh, mind you this video is gonna have some uh, flashy flashy uh, light so if you're sensitive to that uh, fair warning so I'm going to apply around a couple of hundred volts and that's too much current so compliance current should be oops okay right and now the discharge is so small that you can't see it. Oh no, you can. 
So this is running at around 100 microamps and I'm trying not to electrocute myself. And you can see the discharge. Now if we were to negatively bias these grids, look, you can see that the discharge goes away. And if I look at the current on the source meter, it actually changes a fair bit. Great. So we've learned a bit of how these actually work. Now let me show you increasingly ridiculous sizes of thriatrons. So this one is pretty small. It's basically like a the equivalent of a small transistor when it comes to tubes. This is a regular sub-miniature pentode, so um, you can understand that it's it's pretty small. And then we have a big one. Well, it's pretty big. It's not that big. Uh, this is a, I think, a 1 amp peak 800 volt uh, thriatron. It's a TG1-1-0808. Uh, and you can see the internal structure is very, very interesting. So this one actually, when I first found found one at the flea market, and uh, these this video is tying heavily into one other video which you might have or might not have seen yet, where I show you a massive amount of tubes that I scored at the flea market. When I first saw these, I think, oh, oversized DL34. Oh no, it's an actual thriatron. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's a hydrogen or a neon, xenon or whatever kind of thriatron, but you can see that we have two cavities. One of the cavities has the filament inside, I'm not entirely sure if you can see it. There's two wiggly wires coming down from the filament, and this is basically the anode, and the control grid is just this structure in the middle. Um, and this structure in the middle basically blocks or uh, um, enables the discharge between the anode and the cathode. And this one, as opposed to the previous one, the previous one was a cold cathode. This is a indirectly heated cathode and it runs at the same 6.3 volts as the regular um, thread, uh, vacuum tubes of, you know, Six alt six fashion and uh, stuff like that. So we have pins one and ten are the filament. Pin five is the cathode. Uh, grids. There's actually two grids. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention. And the anode is pin eight. And let's see if we can power this thing up and see what it looks like uh, when it discharges. So I'm going to take my trusty power supply leads which are far too short. Uh, give me a few seconds. I have to rig some stuff up. Right, so we have pins 1 and 10, which are the filament. It will happily run off of AC voltage or DC voltage. And then we have pin 5, which is the cathode. Pin 5. And pin 8, which is the anode. And, uh, sorry I bumped this thing, I'm sorry if I'm causing you motion sickness. And I will now enable the filament. Uh, and you can see my, you can hear my power supply complaining because um, this one's quite a lot of film in the current. <clears throat> There's quite a lot of uh, emission current necessary in this type of device. And... The power supply is currently limiting at 3 amps, which is its maximum. I got to 5 point something volts. And it's going to drop as the filament heats up, its resistance increases. And now it's pretty much fully uh, warmed up. Right, so if we can see in there... Uh, it's going to take a while, apologies. It's going to take a while until you'll be able to see the, f the cathode actually glowing. And until then, we won't be able to get any emission as well. So, let's wait for a bit longer. I can feel the bulb warming up. 
Um, right, so... So I think if I turn off the back, the light ring, the ring light, you'll be able to see the glow discharge. Yes. And you can also see the beautiful glowing cathode. Now, because my source meter is actually current limiting at the moment, I will do something cheeky and I will set it to source current with a compliance voltage of um, 100 volts or something like that and see if we can ignite the the thing and it didn't ignite which means Well, I don't think we're going to get any more gas discharge than this. You can see it's very pretty though. Apologies for the banding you might see. It's from the light of my LCD monitor. Let's see if that helps. Oh yeah. That's pretty. Okay, let me turn off this one and turn off the power supply for the filament. <clears throat> and it's gonna take a while to cool down because, yeah, there's a lot of thermal inertia. You can see that I've disconnected it a fair while back and uh, it's still glowing. Right, sorry if I blinded you. Um, so this was this is a pretty capable device. It can pulse peaks of kilowatts basically. Um, let's see a slightly bigger one. I'm not sure which one of these. Oh yeah, let's look at this one. Right. So this is a TG1-2.5/4. Um, it's much larger. I think you can see the writing on it as well. Um, the internal construction of this thing is just beautiful. So we have the same filament. With, this one is a directly heated cathode with a single control grid and an anode. Filament wants 2.5 volts at 14 amps because of course it does. And the peak anode voltage can be as high as 4 kilovolts and 100 amps of peak anode current so this can switch pulses of 400 kilowatts right uh, kilovolt times 100 amps is 100 kilowatts so this can switch half a megawatt in a pulse which is insane uh, I think this one was also used and uh, please ignore the diode here this diode is here for one simple reason, it's for something to clip on uh, when I test the thing. So, let's do the same thing as we did previously, sorry. I'm going to have to connect the anode voltage and I'm going to connect the filament as well, which is going to be a bit more tricky. <clears throat> And wait a second. Hopefully, it will reach just barely. And this one, we you won't be able to see glow. Wait a 
a second. Apologies. And it will take a bit for the thing to warm up. Um, it's maxing out two of my power supplies at the moment because of course it is. And yeah, let's wait for it a bit. So you can see there is a screw inside which holds the assembly in place rigid. There is a couple of getters. I don't know exactly what this structure is. Um, insulator i discussed a bit of this in the other video i was telling you about but i'm not sure which one is gonna make it first uh to market and um anode is here and um i don't know exactly which one is the control grid because pin 4 isn't really labeled but yeah let's see we will just leave it floating okay so i I think it should have heated up by now and now we're getting into dangerous territories here um, because there's a kilovolt here and wait a second Huh. No discharge yet. Let's give it another second. I'll pause the video and come back when it's fully warmed up. Right, sorry about the hand holding, but I had to move the <clears throat> the thing closer to the power splice because it was dropping so much power over the cables that it wasn't heating the filament up enough. So I switched to shorter cables and I just put it out and let's reignite it and it doesn't really wanna. It's kind of fussy. So you got, you got to see that glow discharge and yeah it seems to not want to do that anymore. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, uh, it might be, oh look turn back on. I might be just worn out a bit and weak or something like that but look at that. It's a beautiful discharge in there. It takes quite a lot of power to run this thing. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put you back on the stand before I make anybody sick and then I will um, show you a couple more and then I'm gonna show you a neat little trick so be right back so because I'm a madman I got two more thriatrons these are so big that I can't fit them in frame like that so I'm gonna switch them around uh, this one on top is a T GI 1-400-3.5 and this is a TG2 TGI2 400-16 so if those numbers are anything to be believed this one is a 400 amp peak at three and a half kilovolts and this is a 400 amp peak at 16 kilovolts so you can see just how massive this thing is um, sadly I think this one's uh, well and truly buggered because uh, there's snow inside it uh, you can see it's like something like the ceramic insulator or that's the cathode coating or something like that there's uh, been damage done to this thing and uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna light up and I'm not even gonna try it um, you can see that there's a uh, quite a lot of 
wear on this one and you can I think you can see there's a shade here this is where anode material is actually sputtered onto the glass this one however is uh, pristine this one actually was in its own box and I'm not entirely sure but I think these might have some parasitic traps in the bases so this one seems to have an inductor in there I don't know why probably to dampen something and you can see this one as well just the gen structure inside um, beautiful beautiful vacuum tubes absolutely gorgeous but um, yeah totally obsolete um, these are going straight into my weird tube collection because now uh, I'm getting increasingly more fascinating and weird uh, tubes and um, the trick I wanted to show you is uh, oh by the way short uh, break <clears throat> I think you all know 6L6s and 6V6s and stuff like that small power tetrodes pentodes stuff like that well let me let me show you a true power pentode actually this is a tetrode this is a GU81M it's a I think 2000 volts almost anode and almost an amp uh, plate uh, current 800 watts plate dissipation something like that giant this is an RF output tube it's got a transconductance of like three and a half so it needs a heck of a lot of, of a lot of drive but just look at it it's beautiful and because I uh, I'm also a madman. I'm going to show you what the filament looks like when you light it up, but you'll have to bear with me for a few seconds while I do some clue GS wiring. And uh, so the wiring is so kludgy that I'm actually not even going to show it to you. You'll just see two mysterious uh, wires appear and contact two of the pins uh, on the base of this thing. I think you all know what I'm doing. And let me just try and get it contacting there. Right. Hold on, uh, crocodile clips. Be right back. Right, so as you can see, this is now a 120 watt light bulb and let me just carefully show you the filament inside. Let me try and get it. Yeah, that should be just barely visible. The filament is actually on some springs. Um, I'm gonna turn on the light again and show you. But the filament is on some springs, so as it heats up uh, you know it expands and the springs keep it under con constant tension this is a directly heated vacuum tube and right now uh, it's pulling 120 watts just to keep itself warm so efficiency wasn't a very strong suit of vacuum tubes that's why solid-state devices are so wonderful but you have to admit this is a beautiful vacuum tube and it's one of the biggest vacuum tubes you can easily find around like at least in Romania okay uh, and just so you know I use the 12 volt output of a computer power supply to drive the filament of this thing because I don't really have a 12 volt 10 amp power supply handy and I'm not gonna wind the transformer for this thing and yeah um, let me show you that neat little trick that I wanted to show you right so what we have here is a magic eye and I can make it blink less and less more and more completely and I can make it blink faster
and this is one of the prettiest vacuum tubes you'll be able to find if you'll be able to find these are exceedingly rare and um, they wear out like crazy so their life is very short and you can see it's not very big and it's not very bright at all like even to my eyes which are far superior to the camera when it comes to green um, and noise performance this is still very dim in a very dim room um, and it's pulling around almost 2 milliamps at 300 volts to do this so yeah uh, heater uh, cloud of electrons boils off gets attracted and then repelled a bit by this well actually it doesn't get really repelled but it gets projected on that inner cone in there which has a phosphorus on it and there's an electrode which controls uh, the it's sort of like a, a deflection plate basically that's what it is and that deflection plate moves the thing around uh, I will draw a quick schematic uh, and show it to you guys and uh, it's very easy to drive so it's 6.3 volts for the filament uh, it's 300 ish volts for the anode I'm overdriving it a little bit because it's very very weak very very weak and um, there's one resistor going between two pins and that's about it um, the control grid which is pin 5 is being driven from 0 to negative 4 volts in this case to almost completely close the eye and uh, yeah that's all and I know it looks like a nightmare my thing I've done over here but it works uh, Keithley 237 to the rescue and that's the best power supply the high voltage power supply I have um, yeah so let's wrap this one up because it's a doozy before we wrap this one up though there's one more vacuum tube that i have lying around from that same lot which is just too beautiful not to show you so this is a stabilitron i think that's what it's called and it's a voltage regulator tube and this one I think it's neon it is neon uh, neon kind of like a Nixie tube the discharge is very reminiscent of a Nixie tube it's very pretty and uh, let's see actually it's set to 310 volts but it's not So let's see, let me drop the voltage a bit. Oh, it's gone off. So it's around 120 volts. So this is basically a 120 volt Zener diode. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. It glows very nicely and it's kind of bright actually. And yeah, warning, warning, uh, gonna get very bright again. Uh, apologies I don't have any delicate way of doing that um, these kinds of videos with dim things shot kind of late at night are uh, very difficult okay so conclusion uh, we talked about thyriotrons and we saw a couple of uh, glowy tubes and um, Oh yeah, let me draw you the schematic for this thing. I can't be bothered to actually do anything else other than draw at this point because it gives me time to practice my drawing skills. So we have the cup which is pin 6 and we have the anode which is pin 3 and we have the control grid which is pin 5 and we have filaments which are pin 2 and 7 and fil the filament only one of them and we have the cathode which is pin 8 and we put this in the ground this wants 6.3 volts it can be AC or DC 
this has a signal which is going from 0 to negative 4 at some frequency, so 0, negative 4. And we, I think you need the 1 meg resistor from here to here. Uh, it might work with something else, 100k, 470k, anything. And you put 280 volts here. And that's it. And this will blink. So, um, I hope you find this useful. I hope you enjoyed the look at Thriatrons from the smallest to the absurd. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time. Oh, by the way, uh, I disabled mid-roll ads. I think I mentioned this in the other video. I find them unbearable. And I also disabled unskippable ads because I also find that unbearable. And if you want to support me, there's a... I won't start a Patreon or anything, but if you want to support me, I enable the supers and the uh, uh, thanks for videos. And that is about it. Uh, we shall see each other next time. Take care. Bye-bye.